My number 60 is Ink and Gold. Ink and Gold is a push your luck game where players are adventurers diving down into a cave trying to collect treasures and avoid hazards. Each round, players decide whether they're in or out. If they're out, their adventurer leaves and keeps any treasure that they've collected so far. If they stay in, they are eligible to take any new treasures that show up on the cards that get drawn, but they're also susceptible to any hazards that come up. And if the same hazard shows up twice in all the cards that are drawn, then any adventurers left in lose everything they've collected that round. You play five rounds, and whoever collects the most treasure wins the game. It's really simple. I love the push your luck mechanism in this, and it uh, allows for a large player count, which is really nice. So that is why it's my number 60, Ink and Gold. My number 59 is Lotus. So in Lotus, players have a deck of cards that have flower petals on them, and they play those petals to the table to try and complete full flowers of specific types. They are also placing bugs on those flowers to try and gain control of them. When a player places the last petal of a specific flower, they get to take all of the petal cards and keep them to score at the end of the game. But whichever player has control of the flower at that time, and it may not be the player who collected the petals, they get a special ability or some extra bonus points. And the special abilities kind of help out in doing other things throughout the course of the game. This game looks wonderful on the table. It's really pretty, the artwork is gorgeous, and all of the flowers laid out are definitely eye-catching to anybody watch walking by. So I really like it, and that's why it's my number 59, Lotus. My number 58 is Circle the Wagons. In Circle the Wagons, a two-player game, players are drafting cards from a circle that have different land types and items on them. Each card is divided up into four sections and then players place the cards in front of them to build areas of different types of land. Uh, they are trying to also fulfill scoring conditions which are selected at the beginning of the game, and every game has different scoring conditions, so the types of land and items that you're going to want either next to each other or not next to each other are determined by what scoring cards are selected. It's really cool, and the way the drafting works, you can sometimes give cards to your opponent, which can potentially help them or hurt them. This is uh, one of the button shy wallet games. So it literally is in a package the size of like a tiny wallet. So you can slip it in your pocket and take it anywhere, play it at a restaurant, play it, you know, just about wherever you go. I like the portability factor and the gameplay is great as well. So that's why it's my number 58, Circle the Wagons. My number 57 is Startups. Startups is also a small box game from Oink Games, and in it, players are trying to gain majority shares of different companies. The way you gain majority is by playing cards in front of you, but once you are the majority shareholder in a company, you're no longer allowed to play cards of that specific company until someone else becomes the majority shareholder. So uh, what's interesting is you want to hold majority but if you hold it too early, you won't be able to continue gaining cards of that specific type. You're taking cards from the center of the table. You also have cards in your hand. Uh, so you have some secret information that other players don't have that you can hold till the end of the game. But the trick is at the end of the game, anyone who holds stocks in a company that they're not the majority shareholder of, they then have to pay money to whoever is the majority shareholder. So you don't wanna play a whole bunch of cards down that you know you're not gonna be the majority shareholder in because then you're gonna end up paying a bunch of money to the other players at the end of the game. It's a lot of fun and it's pretty quick to play. Uh, and it accounts, I think you can go up to six players with it, but I actually like playing it with a slightly smaller player count around three or four. Uh, so I really like it, and that is why it is my number 57, Startups. My number 56 is Baron Park. Baron Park is a game where players are each constructing their own bear park by using polyomino shaped tiles. So in the game, every tile you place determines what future tiles you get to pick up because when you cover up specific symbols on your board, it will tell you what new tiles you're allowed to acquire and then place later. 
There's lots of different types of bears, of course. Not doggos, though, maybe. I know. But you like bear in park, don't you? Yeah. And uh, so you're building up your park and trying to fill up all of the squares and also uh, <laughs> meet some specific requirements uh, to gain points and different tiles have different point values. It's really fun. I like it a lot. And if you uh, were a fan of Tetris as a kid, this kind of has a Tetris-like aspect with the placing all the polyominoes together and it's really fulfilling in that way. Uh, I really like it and that is why it is my number 56, Baron Park. My number 55 is Ice Cool. Ice Cool is a dexterity game where players are taking on the roles of penguins trying to run around a high school without getting captured by the hall monitor. But the way you do this is the penguins are these little weighted plastic pieces that you flick around the board. So players are trying to flick their penguins through doorways to collect fish, but they don't want to run into the hall monitor and the hall monitor is trying to catch all the penguins. Each of the players get to be the hall monitor one time during the course of the game, and uh, the fish you collect give you points. So uh, at the end of the game, whoever has the most points wins, uh, and maybe apparently really likes this one too. So uh, Ice Cool is really fun, and it's neat because the weighted penguins are actually pretty easy to make cool trick shots with. Like if you flick the top of the penguin's head, it'll hop over a wall, or if you flick it on the side, it'll maybe spin into another room. And uh, the trick shots are pretty easy to pull off, so that's why I really, really love it, and that's why it's my number 55, Ice Cool. My number 54 is Takedo. In Takedo, players are taking on the role of people traveling down the old Takedo Road in Japan on a lovely vacation. <laughs> Maybe he's over there growling, and I don't know why. But so in Takedo, you are trying to have the best vacation possible, make it the most fulfilling. And you do that by uh, landing on different spaces on the board where it will allow you to take different actions, like buy souvenirs, or visit a hot spring, or eat a good meal at an inn, or paint a landscape. But the trick is, this game utilizes a mechanism in which the player whose turn it is is always the player whose pawn is last on the track. So this will potentially allow players to take multiple turns in a row or it just makes sure we don't you don't take turns in turn order always because you might want to skip ahead a few spaces to do a thing you really want to do but then it'll give other players more opportunities for actions behind you before you get to go again i really love this one maybe maybe isn't a fan i don't know maybe are you a fan of this one come here you don't like Takedo? I love Takedo, it's great. And I've played with the two expansions, I believe the Crossroads and the Matsuri expansions, and both of those add some cool new stuff to it as well. But the base game is great by itself as well. Uh, so that is why it is my number 54, Takedo. My number 53 is Hanami Koji. Hanami Koji is a two-player game where players are trying to win the favor of different geishas. All of the geishas are lined up in the middle of the table and players will, on their uh, turn, select one of four available actions that they get to do each round and they can do them in any order they choose where they take cards from their hand and then uh, do something with them that potentially involves distributing them to both them and their opponent. So for instance, one of the actions you can take is you'll take three cards from your hand and lay them out in front of you and then your opponent gets to choose one of them to keep and then you get the other two. So often you're trying to determine what cards your opponent wants, which ones you need, and what how to balance that out with the different actions you have available. At the end of each round, whoever has the most cards of any given geisha gets control of that geisha for the round. And if a player ever controls four geishas or 11 points worth of geishas, then they win the game. Each of the geishas have different uh, varying point values listed on them. Then after three rounds, if no one has met either of those conditions, whoever has the most geishas at that point will win the game. Uh, it's really fun. The artwork is gorgeous. I love it so much. And I really enjoy this one every time it hits the table. So that is why it is, which number is it maybe? Do you remember? Is it my number 53? It's my number 53, Hanami Koji. My number 52 is a game that you probably won't find on very many people's top 100 lists. Maybe I'm the only one, but 
uh, and that is the Omega Virus. The Omega Virus is a game from the early 90s from publisher Milton Bradley, and it is one of the infamous squawk box games that were popular during that era, where the board game has an electronic component that helps drive the game. So in this game, the players are uh, all people on a space station that has been inv invaded by a computer virus that is threatening to blow up the station. Players travel from room to room trying to collect specific items that will help them destroy the computer virus. Then, once they've collected all the items, they have to find the computer virus, which is hidden in one of the rooms on the board secretly, and destroy it. So what's cool is every time a player visits a room, they uh, type in a code based on what room they're in, and the game will prompt them with what happens in that room. Then, at the end of their visit, the game will give them a secret code. What's cool is at the beginning of the game, all of the players selected a secret code of their very own, and the game will know which room the computer virus is hiding in, and if the game prompts a player with their own secret code, then they'll know that's where the computer virus is hiding. So there's some hidden information that players can learn during the course of the game that will help them win. It's honestly pretty simple. You're just walking from room to room collecting items. Uh, you can attack other players, although I typically don't do that because it's kind of mean. And uh, if no one defeats the computer virus, everybody loses. What's really, really funny is that throughout the course of the game, the computer virus is taunting the players through the squawk box. So it's literally making fun of you, saying things like, uh, like it's making fun of the space station because the space station will say, help me, help me. And then the uh, computer virus will go, help me, help me, ha 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 ha, you fools. And it's taunting you and calling you names. And I just adore it. I've had it since my birthday in 1992. I have my original copy. It still works like a champ. I love it so much. If you're ever around me uh, and you want to play it, I will bust it out. That's why it's my number 52, the Omega Virus. My number 51 is Potion Explosion. In Potion Explosion, players are trying to collect ingredients represented by marbles to build and complete potions and then use those potions, um, special abilities to either gain more ingredients or complete other potions and so on and so forth. The coolest part of this game is definitely the components because all of the ingredients are marbles housed in a rolling track with different lanes in it. And every time you pull an ingredient from the tray, if other ingredients then smash together of the same color, you get to take those as well. So you can cascade a lot of different ingredients together all at the same time and take a whole bunch all at once. It kind of uh, reminds me of a lot of popular iOS games, things like Candy Crush and other match three games. Like it has a feel that's similar to that so I think a lot of people who like those might like this too and honestly it's just neat because who doesn't like pulling marbles out of a big giant tray uh, it's really fun there's some interesting strategy in it and the components are great so that's why it's my number 51 potion explosion